Okay, so here's an experiment we're going to do today. I'm going to play some Blitz Chess, five minutes with three second increment, uh, which is one of the standard time controls here on Lee Chess. And uh, play E4, French defense. I'm going into the exchange variation, which is uh, how I'm going to meet this uh, French defense right now. Of course, there's a lot of different options and pretty standard so far. Uh, this is one where, uh, admittedly, I don't know a ton of uh, theory, but um, I do feel like uh, it's something where um, I don't think you need to know a lot of theory. Here I'm exchanging. If he takes with the knight, I'm going to play bishop to d2. And this should be pretty standard here. Okay, uh, he's probably going to play rook to e8 check next. So what I'm going to do first is, um, well, actually, let's see here. Can I just take the, yeah, I'm going to exchange here first. Okay. And take with the queen. Okay, symmetrical structure. And here I'll play a quick bishop to e2. That'll give me enough time to castle. Okay. So I'm castled. And fortunately, pretty even uh, setup here. Uh, what I'm going to do is play this real quick and see if he will help me to. Uh, relieve my problems here with my uh, pawn structure. Okay, this uh, rook to c2 is threatened. I'm going to contest the open file. Okay, he's going to take here. So now he's the one with the, um, the pawn issue. And uh, here I can... I'm going to play f4 first, protecting this pawn. Of course, this diagonal is open, but the queen is no longer on the dark square, so he can't check me there real quick. Um, here he's trying to, looks like he's trying to double, but he's just um, got himself in a skewer here. So let's see how he handles this. So here, skewering his. Um, oh yeah, I could do these little arrows, although that wasn't a good one. These little arrows here. Okay, and I'm just going to take. So now I, I have one exchange, and uh, life is looking pretty good overall. But I do, of course, need to continue to be careful. Um, let's see here. Of course, he can play bishop to g5. Instead, he's going to do that. Um, here I'm going to play my queen here. He's probably going to bring his queen over here, and then I'll offer an exchange with queens, perhaps. Of course, my threat is here because of this pin. If he doesn't move his his queen, okay, and right there. So he should resign soon. Okay. Say good game. And that's one in the books. Let's try one more. My opponent wants a rematch, so I'm gonna give him a rematch. And let's see how this one goes. Okay, knight to f3. Now here I'm just going to play knight to f6 and see what setup my opponent wants to go with. It goes with the d4. So this can, of course, go into a lot of things. And here we are in the standard queen's gambit declined. Okay, knight to c3. And here I'm going to play c6, the uh, semi-slav. He's going into the, I believe this is called the Moran variation. So. Um, Fairly familiar with it. 
and feeling pretty good right now. I'm going to castle, and then here is, let's see what my opponent does. So key move here is taking on c4, and after he takes, then I can push this. This should help to free my game a little bit. Here I'm attacking the knight and the bishop. And if he wants to trade queens, which he chooses not to, that's fine. Um, do I have any sacrifice opportunities here? Bishop takes h2 check, king takes h2, knight to g4 check. And then if, well, king to g3 uh, can be a little annoying, I think. Um, but then I've got things like... Queen to Let's see here. I've got queen to um, g6 check. You know what? Let's try it, guys. Only live once. The whole idea here is that the this knight here is gone um, to defend the king side, and. This may be a little premature, but I think we might have something here that could be interesting. Um, and here the idea, this bishop is blocking here, so this rook can't come over to the fence. So I can get here to this square. And my opponent is uh, in a little trouble. This might not be totally sound, like I said, but I think. Okay, so here, interestingly, a uh, rook sacrificing his rook, maybe? It looks pretty safe to me. And then I'm threatening here, queen to h2 check. So I'm not quite sure what my opponent is thinking, but. Um, of course, that's okay. Uh, here, do I take the rook or do I just keep attacking? Um, I'm just going to take the rook, I think. You see, my opponent doesn't have any any threats of his own, so I, I don't really have anything to really worry about, I think. And so I think my opponent might... Might be resigning soon, but we will see here. So five minutes with three seconds, uh, I, I find that it is um, a decent time control because it's not totally uh, a bullet thing where you can't think you can um, try to uh, come up with some plans. You could do some calculations. And and it really I, I mentioned this on my uh, Patreon Patreon page. Um, one of my my opponent is proposing a take back. I say no, no take backs in Blitz. I'm offended by this request of a take back. Stop offending me. Take back request in blitz. That's what I just typed to him. See, in blitz, uh, you know, you really should not, pra it's not good practice to ask for take backs anyway, because it becomes dependent. It doesn't, you know, if you get punished for your mistakes, then you'll be forced to to avoid having a ton of mistakes. So I never ask for take backs. You know, if I'm playing with my children, I will do a take back, but otherwise, otherwise no. Okay, so here I'm gonna move my queen back and I'm just gonna continue with my attack. Okay. And go with this check. 
And then let's see here. Um this check. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna take a moment here just to double check everything. Uh, I'm thinking I'm gonna check with Well, let's just simplify a little bit. I'm just going to take this. And now with the queen takes, I've got an interesting little move here. I can check here first. Okay, and then I can take this on because this on is pinned here. So I thought that's kind of neat. So I am, uh, let's see, it looks like two rooks up for a piece in a couple pawns. So um, the chess is not super exciting, the opponent blundering. But you know what we're going to try to do today? Let's try to get to 2,000 in blitz here on Lee Chess. I think we could do this in a couple games. So I don't know, is my opponent going to let the time uh, run down? Um, so what Leeches does is Leeches will um, penalize you if you let time run down in a losing position. I think by like temporary bans where you can't play for a few minutes. But it looks like that's what my opponent might be doing. Or maybe he's trying to find something to do. I think he's annoyed that I did not accept the take back. Um, so I've been playing a little more Blitz lately, partly because I've been busy. Uh, I've been trying to get in a couple long games during the week. Uh, I play at um, I have a local chess club that I helped start recently, so I've been playing a little more over the board. Uh, not rated stuff yet. I'm actually going to be directing a tournament at the end of the month, so that's kind of neat. Um, but a couple things I've realized that the Blitz can be very useful, uh, especially uh, making some opening changes because you get to practice get a lot more repetitions, and you got to look up a lot more lines. And again, with uh, time control like 5-3, it's actually fairly uh, fairly long here. So but we'll see. I mean, I think it's uh, um, I think it's a good time control for, for practice purposes. I think anything shorter, then you start to have more of the ill effects of having to play fast. Of course, you are playing fast here too, and, and sure, I made a bunch of mistakes. But it also kind of shows you. Um, I, I think it's really great actually for end game training because it will show you different types of um, it will show you different patterns that you may not be as. Uh, it will show you where you're weak. I guess you know if you're playing a rook and pawn and you're finding yourself struggling. Trying to figure things out instead of trying to um, instead of trying to figure um, I'm sorry instead of trying to come up with um, just moves that you know then I think that's going to be uh, something that's good for you to know and you can look up those openings because especially in some of the theoretical end games you should really know things cold okay. Uh, here I'm playing black against d4. I'm going to play knight to f6. Six. Uh, looks like my opponent is playing fairly quickly here. And back into a queen's camp at the client here. So, and we're going to play c6. And now he takes. Uh, here we're going to take back with the e pawn. Okay. Uh, here, um, kind of a Catalan type setup. Normally, they don't exchange so quickly, but that is okay. Um, you know what? Let me try Bishop to B4. Seems interesting, but then do I lose time here with this driving back of my? Uh... Let's try this. So, if A3, I actually have the idea of Queen to. A5. Um, so now here and win the two bishops, maybe. Oh. 
So, does queen to a5 work here? I think it might. Okay, so here I can, well, we need two bishops really that big of a deal here. You know what, it could be, it could be. We'll try to make it work for us. Okay, this knight takes, and here, um, thinking I just want to, I cannot win material here, uh, but, I can take the time here. This is development's a little, um, maybe a little awkward now. So I can take a couple moves and reposition here. Okay, so attacking my queen. So I can just back this up to e8. Uh, not not c7 because of potential um, pins here with the. Uh, Okay, and since I fought so hard to get those two bishops, I will use them. I'm going to bring it back to e7 with the idea of maybe coming here at some point. Okay, this is rook to d1, and now I can castle. Okay, and here this pins this pawn because he wants to push the e-pawn. And even if he drives me back, I'm going to have some temple on there. And right there. So that's looking pretty good. Here's this. Um, so here it's interesting because he can't. It's pinned at the moment with this queen here. So can I take advantage of this and just ignore it for the moment? That is my question. Um, Or do I want to take it? And if he takes with the knight, well, I think I could just take a move first and do this. Play my rook here so I can move my queen. All right, so now he's trying to pressure in here. And so... What am I missing here? Well... Now I can take with the bishop. So here uh, looks like we're going to have a um, take with the knight first. Free this bishop. Take that one. And here. Here, I think I have a situation where uh, we can trade here. Now I have control over this. And I think I think this should be winning for me. Um, what I want to do here, I want to attack this pawn here and somehow prevent this one. Okay, so he's moving up here. Uh, is there any way I can take advantage of that? So nice, wouldn't it? Uh, rook to d1 check, does that do anything? He has to come here. I don't think that does anything too, too helpful. Uh, let me see if attacking this pawn and getting my, maybe getting my bishop to a better diagonal. What I want to do is, um, I want to take advantage of it. I need to restrict this too, but the problem is then he gets this file, which is not helpful. So, um, let's see here. If I attack, he pushes. Does that do anything? Well, then I can attack him again here, threatening this check, which doesn't do a whole lot, but... Ah, you know, I, I feel like one of my advantages is this pawn here, so I need to keep it from advancing. 
Okay. King moves forward, and here, um, what I want to do is actually. Let's see here. There's a fear of trapping my bishop here, but then I can easily get it out. See. Bring the rook here do anything useful. Well, let's see. Okay, so he's trying to trap it, but it doesn't work here because I can do this and this. And this attacking the rook. So whenever you have that type of situation, you can always advance that pawn there to protect. So his idea was to try to trap here. Um, this is interesting. It really does anything. I'm just going to play my bishop back. <clears throat> okay, this rook here is interesting. So he's kind of restricting himself. I think I can attack this knight and get at this pawn. Okay, so it forces him to go back there. And here, what can we do now? We hit him with this check. Let's do that just to save some time, and then maybe I can get to the back rank here. Okay, I'm getting over here. Okay, now he's moving his uh, knight. He's looking for this check right here. I think I'm going to attack him here first. Okay, he's going to take that pawn. I take this pawn. Okay, I'm going to go here, threatening this check. So a little, not terribly low on time, but a little low on time, I guess you could say. Um, all right, so he's threatening right here. I'm going to move this guy back just to protect against. So the threat here was against uh, F7. And it looks like I'm a pawn up, so with this check just uh, save a little time i am lower on time i need to be careful here okay he's going to go there i'm going to go here attacking this knight again okay and here my i'm going to keep it well let's just move up here keep active Okay, here he's trying to uh, threaten this pawn here. Not really a threat. Um, what can I do? I'm going to attack this knight. If he pushes it, I just, I can pretty much ignore it. Well, I can move my king here to stop him from. Actually, if he pushes it, I'll just check him. Okay, I'll go against this guy. I've got to play a little quickly here. Against this guy. Okay, I'm gonna win that pawn. Here. So you gotta, you wanna keep really, um, keep an eye on things, you know? Try to really stay focused during these games. He has to make sure there are no uh, mating threats. Because uh, I have to watch my back rank. But he moves his... Okay, that's fine. I'm going to hit him with this check first. 
Okay, and another check to gain some time. And here I'm going to swing over, threaten the skewer. And then with the check anyway. Okay, I'm going to move here just to give myself my uh, back rank is feeling a little nervous about that. Okay, here, um, well, he wants a trade. That's fine. Um, I'm not sure if I can win this with the time I have, but uh, we're going to try our best. We're going to try our best. Hopefully I don't lose to some type of tactic here. But my opponent has to be careful too. So, I mean, I do have the advantage. I've got two extra pawns. And here it looks like I'm going to win this knight. This is where drilling those basic tactics is really, uh, really important here. Now, I should be able to win fairly easily. Okay, that's fine. What I'm going to do is just going to go here. Let's see here. Um, two with the check here. Let's do that. With this check, I'm going to push this. Now let's see here. Um, we'll do that. Pretty straightforward now, guys. So actually, his um, his his rook's about to get. <coughs> Excuse me. His rook's about to get trapped here. Maybe, maybe. Okay, so he moves it out. Um, let's see. Gonna... Oh, what should I do here? Push. Okay. Protect. I'm going to push again. Push here. And that should be it. Promote. Oh, I misclicked and promoted to a knight. Amazing. Amazing. Oh, this is terrible. Okay. Oh, horrible. Oh, I'm going to lose now. Okay. This is the problem with time trouble. This is the problem with blitz. Um, Well, I have an extra knight and pawn, so I should be able to win this, but I just have to play so quickly. I don't know. Maybe we won't be hitting 2,000 in this run, but let's uh, try our best. I'm going to try to annoy him here with this knight. No way he can really win this. Okay. So here, I'm going to do something like this. And the whole idea here is to try to avoid any tactical trickery that he might try up his sleeve. And now, um, my threatening mate might be threatening mate here. Gonna check me, that's fine. And as soon as I can, Problem he has now is that his king's on the back rank, or on my, you know, front rank, I guess you could say, but it just makes it a lot easier for me. And here I'm threatening a uh, fork if he doesn't move. Well, he's going to move something. He stays on the second rank here.
that's going to be problematic as well. I have to think quickly. I'm probably going to hit him with a check here. Okay, it looks like my opponent left the game, interestingly, so we will see. So this game was kind of messy. Um, had some nice little tactics in it, but I have to be ready. Uh, I'm going to... Oh, looks my, like my opponent is back. Okay, and now we can hit him here. Okay, I'm going to hit him here. Oh, and then I'm going to get this fork in. See, he couldn't move the other way because I was going to checkmate him. Okay. And my opponent resigned. Okay. That was pretty good. Um, we are getting closer. So I'm only gaining like five or six points per game so it might take a while so maybe i'll just play one or two more games here let's see how it goes okay my opponent here is rated 2200 so this is not going to be as easy as those other games my opponent rated a little over 250 points more than me okay here we're going into a catalan and not really a big deal for me You're playing this semi-slav type structure. Pretty solid overall. And some ideas for, uh, and there's lots of ways to get counterplay. And against this Catalan system, I play a pretty easy, straightforward system. Uh, I used to know a little more of the theory here, but I've not studied it as much lately. So we're going to try our best but the general idea is I put my uh, um, bishop here he can push here if he wants and then I can go here and later I'm going to attack with f6 okay here he's kind of uh, fixing the pawn structure and you can see the similarities between this and the French defense, although in the French, I uh, usually have that C pawn. Okay, pushing his queen back a little bit. And you can see all this firepower I have focused here on F6. And then the main concern is protecting the E6 pawn. Okay, here, uh, there's a little bit of a trap. I don't know if my opponent will fall into it, but if he takes this pawn, I trap this queen with rook to a8. But I think he's just going to, yeah, he's just going to have to drive his uh, queen back. And here, um, she, here I can grab some space. Little positional, put some positional play in there. And there's a lot of ideas here that are nice. Okay, so that bishop comes out that way. I'm going to get some activity uh, preventing this push here. And knight to c7 covers this square where this bishop might want to trade off with mine. Actually, this trade would be probably pretty welcome. I think that would be okay for me. And so we can time this later. We don't need to rush this because we've got some counterplay here on the queen side. Okay, I'm going to stop this b5 push altogether. So let's see here. Um, I feel this is a good time to push this because this queen is kind of annoying to me. Uh, what we can do, though, can we do?
So at some point we'll want to prepare that. Um, actually, now that I think about it, well, let's go for it. Because then this bishop will have a little more scope along this diagonal. And this knight is protecting here. This knight's protecting here. So I get a little more play here. But I do have to be careful here. Now this bishop that moved its diagonal is going to have to move back. Okay, he's focusing here. And play this. Okay, and so now I can actually uh, get, oh, let's see, I got to be careful. This pawn is hanging at the moment. Um, this knight looks like he's coming around to do something. Uh, let's see here. come up with some type of plan here. The problem is, uh, I was running, one of my uh, stronger uh, chess buddies and I were playing, and he was saying, the problem with some of these openings is that it's not designed for blitz. You need to have time to think about the different strategies. And I think he's right. Um, let's see here. Well, I'm going to do something a little awkward here. I'm going to bring my... No, you know what? Actually, let's do this. I'm going to back this guy off. I'm going to swing him around this way. I'm going to say this rook is too good here on this file to, to let loose. But I can actually activate. Okay, so here, threatening this guy. There will be two here. So this knight is a little overloaded, or he can't move. Fortunate. So, well, here's what we're going to do. Is this... Let's get our king out of the way. I think we're going to have to lose a pawn here. Uh, okay. There. I think here... We get some counterplay. So I need to play my rook here to block this guy here. It also frees this knight, which will be helpful. Then my knight can counterattack a little bit. I gave up a pawn, but he's going to take that knight, and I'm going to take that bishop. This guy. Okay, well... Oh, if I'm I'm down a pawn. Well, look at this. I've got some activity here. That's not too great. Um, now I'm down two pawns here. What type of counterplay can I generate? Well. Fortunately, I 
which I think this game is probably lost. Let's see here. I cannot defend both the... Oh, I can. I can do this. Not great. Not great. But you know what? It's Blitz, so let's try to fight on a little bit. Okay. Uh, double attack here. Uh, but now with my pawn protected, I can actually play this. And win back one of my pawns, maybe. Maybe. Okay, queen here. Uh, see what the ideas are. I think I just win this. Get a little bit back. I have to be careful of my back rank. Something I'm a little concerned about. Okay, knight comes here, threatening this check. Um, I think I have to chop it off. And here, I'm going to uh, swing around and make this threat. Threatening here. So even though my opponent is up a pawn, I've got some counterplay. Okay, he's going to block with this knight here, actually threatening check here. Uh, what I can do is... Swing my, my my bishop around, sacrificing this. But of course, I'm threatening his knight. Okay, he's going to. Huh. I don't know why that works. I don't think that works. If he goes here. I just bring my rook down. Okay. Ah, that's why because of the back rank threat. So, um. We're down a pawn, and here we can, ah, trouble. I am in trouble. All right, let's do this. We need to make some room here. I'm going to bring my rook back. Okay. Gotta bring the rook back. Protect the back rank. Okay, we're gonna make a little room. Okay, he's putting pressure on this pawn. Have to protect it. What I'm doing here is trying to get my feet a little more active. Okay, um, this. Okay, um, here. Okay, I just need to do that. I might be in trouble. Okay, uh, take this pawn. I'm gonna protect here because this pawn is pinned. I'm gonna take there, take back, take there. I'm gonna protect this pawn. I'm gonna push this pawn. And 
Now we shall see. Okay, we've got a game here, guys, because uh, my king is active and my pawn is advanced. Okay, I'm going to hit him with this check. Okay, um, go back here. I can protect my pawns. Now I can take this pawn. We don't mind trading these pawns here. I take. Take. And I'm going to hit it. And I think. I think this is a draw. But one more time. Take. And then. Pretty sure this is a draw. Good game. Hey, we drew the 2200. Now uh, he wants a rematch. I said, sure. So we are moving along here. He wants to play the Sicilian. Let's challenge him in the open Sicilian here. Uh, I don't know a lot of theory, but dynamic positions like this are great for blitz. So let's see again. Um, okay. The Sveshnikov is being played, and here, I know a little bit. I, I tried playing the Sveshnikov for a little while. Some of the positions didn't really suit me. Plus, uh, and that's not as much the case as potentially um, That's not as much the case as potentially uh, just a lot of trying to learn new things. So I'm, I'm okay with that. Okay, pretty standard position here. I'm going to play this. Knight to c2, trying to get this knight back into the game. Um, have some ideas like this. Okay, he's, not, he's uh, going there, so I'm going to protect this knight. And the whole idea here is that I have this d5 square, owner, full ownership of it. But a lot of times black can play around it. So that's where the dynamics are of it. Uh, of course, um, world champion Magnus Carlsen has played the champion this opening quite a bit. And that's why it's fairly popular now where it used to be kind of a... Uh, Backwater, not, not a backwater type of thing. I mean, a lot of players like um, Kramnik played it in the 90s. Uh, Shirov played it. Uh, Kasparov actually played it a couple times as well. But the idea is that it is a uh, very sharp opening, but apparently, apparently very sound. I found a lot of the games I was looking at with Black uh, that, I don't know if this is the right recapture here, but... Uh, uh, well, I think you have to recapture like that. But uh, here, I think this, unfortunately, this might allow d5. Again, this is an area where not knowing the, the theory as much is a little bit problematic. But, uh, okay, just castle to safety here. Kind of have a... Kind of a normal game going on. Uh, I'm going to see how I can. Okay, here comes d5. I uh, pretty much have to take it, I think. Uh, 
pick here. And here, these threatening mate here. Um, of course, I don't like, but let's do. I think F3. Okay, not so great, but I think I can actually play. Okay, bishop to e4 doesn't work. So am I just losing a bishop here? I think I am. We can't win everything, I suppose, but uh, let's see here. And the whole idea, bishop e4 loses to any of these queen checks, and then my king is open here. So I should, probably should have played something else. Um, this could be a well-known trap or something. So let's just go ahead and get a little something for that bishop. And we are down uh, probably not going to last too much longer here. But, oh, jeez. Just click. Okay, we're going to resign. Okay, good game. Good game. Going to let's find a new opponent. I haven't really been tracking how long we've been playing, so <laughs> let's find another opponent. One more for today, maybe. Okay, guys. Um, e4. So knight to f3. Okay, let's do a little Roy Lopez again. Another newer line that I am learning. And interestingly, even to talk about all this theory, when you understand a lot of the basic ideas, especially in Blitz, you can do a lot here. So, okay, so this is an interesting situation. When d6 is played, I like to play d4 here, threatening right away uh, this knight. So here, um, how, how do I want to handle this? I can I can go ahead and, and I, right now I'm already out of, out of my, my book knowledge, but uh, I think I can just castle here, and the idea will be that if he wants to exchange, that will be fine, but I will get a nice um, lead in development. Okay. Um... So I don't have to protect that yet, so I won't. And what I'm going to do is play, I want to play c3. No, you know what, let's pin, let's pin this knight now. Okay, now he unpins. Now I do have to protect. Now, it's going to castle. So here I have to make a decision how I'm going to proceed. Uh, I can actually, you know what I like here is knight to f5. Knight to f5, and this if he wants if he takes this knight if he doesn't take this knight then I've got a little bit of a nice little uh well I can always take this bishop. You can play knight to e5 too. Here, that protects this guy. But if he takes, I open up the e file for myself. So what I'm going to do, uh, as you can see, I played a few games here, and a few of them I knew some of the theory and some of the ideas, and some of them I didn't. And some of the sharper ones, especially like the Sicilian, I'm going to want to look up the lines and see if there's any game examples, as well as just analyze see where I went wrong in that game. But what I'd really like to know from you guys is, are, do you want to see me play a little more uh, Blitz as part of our mix? I probably wouldn't do it too often, but every, maybe every few weeks, 
Uh, is my commentary helpful for you? I know uh, some other YouTubers, um, you know, stronger players, especially who do play Blitz, and you guys enjoy that. Uh, so uh, that's kind of what I want to know because I'm, well, I'm just curious because I think that there is a uh, a place for it in, you know, in this mix of videos that we make. It's something that I've been resisting. I don't know if I've ever made uh, a blitz video before so uh, please let me know i'd be very interested in your opinion on that okay also hit those like buttons if you like uh if you like it that'll kind of give me another signal here okay so now i think i can just take care first and then and what leaving this bishop see right now this bishop isn't great but i wonder if it's one of those things where it can become very dangerous at some point you know what let's let's just get some development in i don't think anything's in danger right now okay now he's threatening this so here i think i just drop it back Drop it back here. Now, this bishop is pretty bad. Um, knights are okay. And here, uh, I'm thinking knight to this knight here. Good trust. Oh, of course, I hit, got hit with a uh, got hit with a tactic here because this this knight is hanging. So, have to take with the queen. It should be okay. Should be okay. I'm threatening this pawn right here. Now, if he attacks me with c6, I've got knight takes e7 check. Then I can take the e pawn, I think. This rook could come to the d file. Okay. Oh, this is interesting. Um, hope it's good necessarily. But we have here is all right. Let me take here first. And then let me take here. Okay, so what we have here is um, I'm going to play this, trying to prevent this d5 push. And luckily, I can just play f3 to protect this. The material is even. I have a slight structural advantage, but I, I really think this game is probably fairly even. This knight is not necessarily that much worse than this bishop. Well, that's not totally true. But I can't really take advantage of it, I don't think, right away. Okay, and that just made things worse for him, I think, because now, oh, unless he plays here. I can, what is he doing here? I'll play b3. And here, the difference is if he comes here to open this up, I am in a better position to take advantage of this open file, I think. So, play my rook here. See if I can just get him to play this c6. Okay, now he's that. Um, I 
unfortunately, I don't think I just play this real quick and see if I can push it back. See, I, I like this structure here. I might just need to take. take here see if we could exchange off so this end game is probably pretty even ah oh, okay um let's do that And then I'm going to bring my king in. Okay. Bring my rook here to oppose this. I'm not sure if that was the best move, actually. Um, but I think uh, let's see. I'm gonna kinda keep, keep flexible with this king. I thought is maybe I could bring it over here. Right here, maybe. Maybe I can push on here. Okay. So here, I think this is good for me. Okay. The problem he has is that I can win this pawn now. This is where knowing kind of your end game, kind of have a little end game plan is very important. I mean, he's got stuff over here, but it's going to take a while for that. But here I just bring my king over and then I block his rook. And if he checks me, I just back my king up. So here I'm going to do this, or I could just take the pawn with my king. Okay, here, and here first, here, and here. And now the problem is, of course, that he cannot... Um, he has to deal with this pawn to try to race me, but that's okay because I'm going to make a queen, then life will be much simpler for me. Queen pins his pawn. Okay, and here I can just bring my over here like this. Let's hit him with this check first. And with this check protecting my pawn. Here I want to make sure I'm not going to get stalemated. And actually we're going to go in for the checkmate. Uh, let's see here. Let's do... This Let's see, always want to make sure he has a square to go to. Fortunately, I will not stalemate you. Check. Let's 
So you just have to watch out for the stalemate here. And my opponent left the game. Probably sometimes in Blitz, your opponents aren't uh, online. You know, uh, you know, you, you would never do this stuff in. Uh, <laughs> you would never do this stuff in over the board. Okay, let's just take a quick look at how I did today. Um, started off here, white uh, exchange variation against the French, and we won that game in twenty-one moves. Uh, rematch with the same opponent. Again, my opponent's rated nineteen hundred, but again, uh, made a few blunders here. He has a problem with. Uh, pins, I think, in Blitz, and was able to, I actually had a, a Greek sacrifice in this game, uh, and won that one in 23 moves, after he sacrificed both of his rooks, um, played another uh, semi-slav here against someone rated 1909, and then this game was interesting, because I actually under-promoted to a knight accidentally, and was still able to pull that off in 85 moves, and this, this game here, um, against a 2200 actually was very interesting and was able to pull off a draw, although I believe I was on the worst end of that one. Um, here, uh, playing white against uh, the same opponent, again, rated 2200, this time uh, playing in unknown waters of the Shveshnikov. Um, I think I fell probably into a trap that my opponent knew about, and we'll have to analyze that. And then finish it off here with a nice win in the uh, Roy Lopez, where I was able to win in the end game. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think. Would you like to see me play a little more Blitz? Uh, probably wouldn't do it too often, but you've been if you enjoy it, it's uh, fairly straightforward to do. I do enjoy uh, playing, and uh, commenting wasn't. Too bad. I think it actually helped me to focus and play a little bit better. So uh, let me know what you thought in the comments. Uh, also, just want to uh, thank my patrons. I really appreciate your support. If you want to consider supporting the channel, check it out down below. And over here, uh, again, these games are fun, but if we don't analyze them a little bit and take a look at where we could have improved and look up our openings, it's not as useful. So for over here, uh, put a video on how you can analyze your games for improvement. Okay, have a great day, and I'll talk to you soon.